Welcome back guys, and today's episode we're going to be showing you guys at home how to install self-adhesive bathroom tiles. Wow! <laughs> so these are vinyl self-adhesive tiles, so big shout out to Create Your World Limited who have supplied all the products in today's video. These are what you will be getting, and we're going to be covering all the steps you need to get this from here to there. So your first step when installing your vinyl self-adhesive tiles is checking that your subfloor is okay. We've got floorboards and this is not actually acceptable because the wall tiles or the floor tiles will not adhere to the floor correctly. So we're going to have to stick a 5mm ply down and make it nice and smooth so the tiles stick correctly. If you've got a concrete floor and it's not level, you're going to have to lay down a self-leveling compound, a screed to make sure the tiles adhere to the floor. Let's get this job done. Right, so if you do need to do some ply, you should end up with something like this. So me and Brad are gonna wrestle this in quick. Because we've done it in one sheet like nutters. Yes. This is sort of like a suitable subfloor. As you can see, it's all nice and flat. We're gonna wrestle it in. You don't have to do it, guys, in one piece like us. We're just trying to get a nice flat subfloor. Like our glove. <laughs> and it fits perfectly. That didn't happen the first time, by the way, guys. We're not that good few attempts but we got it in and this is what you're going to want so you can start laying those beautiful tiles we're going to pin this down now just remember guys when you're fixing your ply down to be careful with the pipes below so don't use too big of a fixing just make sure you take into consideration the depth of both floorboard and ply let's jump into installing some vinyl tiles right so now you've got a nice floor to lay on your next job is going to be your layout so these have got a design you may have plain you may not but if you have got a design we want to pick where we want them we've decided we want ours to run through the center with two equal cuts because of how this bathroom is but you measure yours how you think you want it you can just lay these down without pulling the adhesive off to see what you think so to get these center all we're going to do is measure this gap here 810 and we're going to mark 405 for us you do what you need obviously so we're going to measure that off this main wall here and do a few marks and once you've done that we're going to use a level you can use a string uh, chalk line but if you haven't got one a level will work so we're going to sit our level here cross our marks like so and just pull a little line like so we're going to do that the rest of the way and then we'll cover how to line your tiles up right so we've got our level line main reason we do this is you don't want to be coming off of things like that because nine times out of ten that's not going to be straight and that's going to cause you problems down the line all your tiles will end up wonky you'll end up with silly cuts so get yourself a center line Decide where you want it. You can either go next to your line if that works out best for you or you can go in the middle. Um, what you're looking out for is a decent cut on the side. You don't want no little slivers. So make sure if you just get your line, get a couple, don't pull the sticky off yet and just sit them over. As you can see, we're going to have a nice big cut so that works for us. Or if we had it like that, again, we'd have a nice cut. So. Just look out for cuts, size of cut. You want a nice cut down the sides. You don't want any little slivers. If you are going to, adjust your tiles to suit. Right, so what I'm doing here before we start laying is I'm just doing a final check of how it finishes on the length. I've not pulled any of the sticky back off. I've just laying them loose. Give me a rough idea. As you can see, I've got a nice good cut back here. So I'm not too fussed. I can start it on a full tile at the doorway and it's all going to work out. If yours ends up with a little sliver, just slide yours forward so you've got a nice cut at the back. Just remember that. So let's get on with putting some tiles down. So it's finally time to start putting some tiles down on your floor. If you're, if you're laying uh, plain tiles, get yourself a measuring tape and mark yourself two centre lines. And that way you're going to know where to put it on your marks rather than trying to guess. And you've got to spend a bit of time on this. This is the important one because your whole floor is going to be coming off of this. 
So all you're going to do is peel the sticky back backing off. Right, so, and because we've got a centre line on our tiles, we don't need to measure or anything, we're just going to come straight off of this. So we're going to get on our mark at the front. We're not putting any pressure on these. Nice and loose to make sure we get it perfectly on our marks. Once you're happy with the position, give it a nice push down with your hands, like so. And that's it, it's stuck. Now we can start moving on, paying special attention to the corners lining up. If these are not lined up, then everything's going to start going off, and that's, that's something we don't want. So we pull the next one off, put it in the bath, because that's where it belongs. Now this is important, okay, because what we're going to do, we're going to run the centre all the way through. We're not going to do any of this yet. We're going to do all the centres. What I like to do is just put the two corners together like so, a little bit of pressure, and then lower it down onto our mark, like that. A bit of pressure over all the joins. Make sure it's fully stuck, and then we're going to repeat it again. Now that you guys at home have set in all your vinyl tiles straight through the centre like so, and it's time to move on to the complicated bits like the cuts. And I've got some top tips for you here guys, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So our first job, we're going to be covering door frames. And in this section here, it looks super complicated. There's two methods to do this. You can either use a combination square, which is a lot more difficult, or a simple DIY method to cut these tiles is you're going to grab yourself a bit of cardboard, and usually the box that they come in is quite handy, like so. This one's quite a good shape. What you do is you lay it down, and you cut it to the shape of your tile. So tiles are obviously, they cost money. This doesn't. So if you do make a mistake, you can just grab another bit. So we're going to template it here now with a Stanley blade, and I'll show you how. So you're going to start by grabbing your scrap of cardboard and offering it up to the gap. And mine don't fit both ways. So I'm going to start by netting this side, so that's where the tile is going to sit in that place. And I'm going to cut along here, and that's the actual width for the tile. And then we'll start cutting out the shape of this. So I'm going to tip it back like this. You can't do this with the tiles, that's what's nice about it. And then you can cut it in. Now that you guys have cut your width down, like so, test fit it first before you start doing all the frame, because you'll be very disappointed if you get the frame right and it's short on the sides. Mine, it fits in nice and snug. And now it's time to move on to this door frame. Right, now you need to work your frame. So now cardboard bends, so this is the good thing where tiles don't. I'm gonna line this up with the front section, because I know that's where the tile's gonna end. And we'll push it into the first bit, like that, that's the first bit it hits, let's hold it still, let's not move it, and then we're going to do a nice little cut, like that, make sure it cuts all the way through, like, I don't want to cut through the bottom, that's it, like that, and then we're going to move the next bit up to the next bit of frame, and make another cut, but on that bit, round here drops back, so I'm going to come away on that bit, so if you're following this guide, just make sure you take your time and make sure you don't miss no drop backs and then that will start folding around that corner. It's much easier to work these than tiles because tiles are obviously a lot harder. And then if it gets a bit stiff as you're going around, just put one little splice in and it's called a relief cut but we're just going to do it with cardboard because it makes it easier to work around the frame. I'm going to make one more relief cut on that last bit just coming towards us and that will fold around. Ignore the dusty old frames, they are being sanded and painted at one stage. And look, now we're starting to get shape of this frame. So to get this cut, we're just gonna push in this gap here. Well, it needs another one over that. Let's go one more time. Let's get back onto this frame. Oh. 
So if you've noticed that every section I flicked back, I flicked back, and then once it's pushed right into that gap, now we can cut it like, like push hard into the bottom bit. And look, you see it's starting to take shape of this really awkward section. So now that you guys at home have cut your cardboard to the shape of your frame, it fits in nicely. I'm going to work off a reference point, which is this top corner here. So I'm going to place that on the top corner of this tile here. Take it away, and then I'll put it on this top corner. That's mainly where I'm working from. And then place all your knees on it. Just make sure when you're penciling it, it don't move, because you'll be really disappointed once you transfer your marks. So I'm going to grab myself a pen pencil. Oh, I'm going to give myself a pencil. Give me that pencil. So just use any pencil. You ain't going to use a stupid fancy one like me. And then transfer your marks. Now that you've drawn it on your board, you should have something that looks like this. Just make sure when you cut this, that you cut inside of the pencil line this side, because if you cut that side, it's going to be too big, because our line was here and we've drawn it on the outside. So that's why you have to make sure you cut inside where the cut's actually going to go. So once you finish penciling that in, put crosses on the bit you won't need. That helps when you come to cut it out. So I need to cut this long straight section off here first that nets against this bar panel. And what you can do is use a, use a tile because they've got a straight edge on them. And all you need to do to cut these bad boys is lay it against your tile and give it one light score, maybe two, depending on how good your standing blade is. I'll show you two because some people's standing blades ain't too sharp. And then snap. And then you've got to grab it like this and run your blade like so. Make sure you keep it away from you. And then that is how you get that edge. And then just test fit that first. Make sure you're happy with where that sits in like that. That's perfect for me. I'm going to continue to cut this section out. We're going to cut this bit out now. Make sure you stay on the outside of the pencil line. Just take your time at this point because obviously you don't want to do it twice. It's quite a hard cut. Just go nice and slow. You're just scoring the tile. You ain't trying to splice all the way through it. And you can just follow your line as you go around. Right, now that you've scored it once and you start peeling it apart, you need to just run the blade back through it like so. This is how you cut them. I know it looks awkward. And then just snap the next section and then run the blade around the back of it. So now that we've cut that, we're going to test fit it, offer it up, make sure it all fits in nice and make sure this bit lines up, it's very important. If it's slightly out like this and you start laying, they'll just move out and out and out and you'll end up with an absolute nightmare. And don't be afraid if you offer it up and it's a little bit big, you can just trim a little bit off. And even if it's got a tiny little gap around the frame, these will need sealing anyway, so don't be too afraid of that. Right, so now we're gonna place this bit in situ. Don't stick it until you're fully happy. We need to line this section up here first. Make sure it's right. Oh, let's get around the frame first. And as you can see, it's nice and square. I'm happy that all the joints line up nicely. And we're just going to press it along that gap first into that section. Now it's time for you guys at home to move on to your straight section. And I'm going to show you a nice little trick for this so you guys can do it at home. So you get your tile. You place it into where it needs to go, and then you flip it on its back, place it against the wall that you're cutting against, and grab yourself another one of these tiles and stick it where the one is on the floor, like that. Make sure it's all lined up. Then you're going to grab your Stanley blade and just give it a light score. Let's go for one more, just in case it didn't go all the way through. Not all the way through, you're only scoring it because obviously you don't want to damage anything below. And then you literally just simple, these are just snap. You snap it, grab your blade, 
run it through. Don't pull it into your body, move it away, because you don't want to stab yourself. And then, you've cut it like that, you're going to flip it back over and test fit it. And that is a perfect fit. And that is a top tip. Let's get this thing stuck down. And just be careful when you're lining these up because obviously once they stick, they do stick. Line it up with all four corners before you go down. And then slowly work it in, push it onto the floor, nice and stuck, and it's give you a perfect cut. So we're gonna repeat the process all the way along the wall to get a nice finish. Now it's time to move on to pipes. And I'm gonna show you guys an easy way to make a perfect finish around pipes. So you've cut your tile down using the same method this side so it fits in. You need to cut it down first and then line it up with the tile that is going against to make it nice and easy. And you can use a combination square, but I'm gonna show you with just an off cut of tile how you can get the perfect finish. So you make sure you've got a square edge, not the one you cut, make sure you use that. And you put a level line, so you place it against your wall like so. And then you draw a line with your pencil. And then we're gonna draw a line the other side. So now you guys should have something look like this. So this is either side of the pipe, and now you're like, how can I measure how deep? Well, this is the trick. So you get your off cut of tile, push it against the wall where your thing's going, and mark either side of the pipe, like that, either side and then bring it down onto your tile and template it across. And then this section here is where we're gonna be cutting. So you can cut it with a Stanley blade, but to get the best finish on this section, you're gonna to need to use pipes of 15 mil. I'm gonna use a 16 mil spade bit. Right, and if you've gone through your spade bit, you should end up with a perfect little circle that will wrap around this pipe. If you've had to cut it out with a standing blade, don't worry, you can use a rad cover that I'm gonna show you in a second. And now I'm gonna show you how to actually wrap it round, because you can't just get it in there like that. So you have to put a little splice in, and this helps get it around the radiator pipe. So you just do two scores, like I've been showing you in the video, snap it, and then just run your blade through the tape in the back. So, and then we're gonna wrap it around the pipe. So now we're gonna to come to test fit this thing. We won't stick it first, we'll just test fit it first. Make sure it fits, because obviously you don't wanna get it stuck in the gap. And yeah, it's looking all nice and neat. It's gonna be a bit sticky, that's it. We're gonna wrap that around the pipe. We're gonna make sure we're all butted up to all the pieces. That's it. It's all nice there. It's all nice there, lovely stuff. And then we'll push it all nice so it's all fixed in. And that is how you get a perfect finish around a pipe. So I'm gonna show you a little top tip. So if yours is looking rough and you're thinking, oh, it don't look like it's in the video, don't worry. They sell these little radiator colics and they're only a couple quid. And you literally wrap it around the pipe. Look how much space you have in case you do make a mistake. You can clip these on, put them down, and that's it, you've got a neat finish. Don't worry about it. Let's move on. I'm gonna stick my last piece in and I hope I've helped you guys at home. I hope you managed to lay your floor all nice and easy. Just remember, if I've helped any of you guys at home, I really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you at the next one. Peace.